Good evening. Something to smile about on a tough day for Mills Mulyaina. The Chiefs captain will lead the All Blacks in June's tests against France and Italy. The 68 test fullback has the reins until Richie McCaw returns. McCaw's replacement in the squad is Chiefs open side Tanaro Latimer, although Adam Thompson is also likely to play in that position as well. Latimer is one of three new caps along with Crusaders lock Isaac Ross and prop White Crockett. Rodney Sooyalo is being given the chance to rest his neck before the Tri-Nations, while Sione Lawaki is in the junior All Blacks. In the backs, Stephen Donald is the first five, while Piri Wepu is set to be his backup. Luke McAllister is in the junior All Blacks. New skipper Mills Mulainas impressed the selectors with his leadership skills this season. Get the heads up. Uh, he's a highly respected guy in the squad. He's got a lot of mana with the troops. And I think he's done an outstanding job with the Chiefs this year. Um, and I spoke to him earlier on this morning. And obviously he was a bit uh, disappointed with the result in South Africa. But um, was, was delighted and feels very privileged to be asked to <coughs> captain the All Blacks. It seems new cap Tanner Latima won't be the first choice number seven. Adam Thompson would be the first choice open side flanker. He's played outstandingly, quite frankly, for the, for the Highlanders. He's been a special player in the Super 14. And I think Tanner Latima will put, provide huge competition. It'll be interesting to see how it pans out. And why did the likes of Joe Rokothoko get in ahead of Chiefs try scoring machine at Lilia Masanga? For a, a special skill set for the back three. I think, think it's really important that taking the high ball and kicking skills at you know, international level are, are critical. And, and that's the area of the game that he's working hard on. Um, he's just got to keep making progress there. But he's a, he's a very talented player. He's young. And uh, I'm sure he's got a good future. The All Blacks team naming has taken some attention away from the Chiefs' terrible performance in the Super 14 final in Pretoria. They simply stood no chance against the Bulls, who became the champions for the second time. Any nerves the Chiefs may have had about playing their first Super 14 final were blown away in the seventh minute when Stephen Donald sparked a superb counter-attack. Now can he link up? He does so. And here's a real opportunity. And uh, Lelia Masanga is going to score the first try in the final. But if the Bulls were feeling sluggish on their home turf, it didn't show two minutes later. Dupriere takes it himself. Thury Dupriere cancelling out the advantage and reversing it three minutes later, after Alain de Malmanche lost the ball in a crunching Stentner tackle. Here's Dupriere. The little halfback's going to get another one. The game was effectively won and lost with three tries in six devastating minutes. The Chiefs playing catch-up before half-time, and desperation often has a price. The second half started like the first with the Chiefs on attack. Unfortunately for the Chiefs, it ended like the first half too. Here's a go by Oh, he threw it straight at uh, Victor Matfield. Oh, it's pass. And, and, yep. And a crack at the line and a try. The Bulls take their second Super Rugby trophy in three years, 61-17. We scored that try off a, off a kick and we, uh, you know, we, we thought we could build some pressure from there, but a couple of turnovers, a couple of intercepts, and, and they got their tails up. And, but, mate, when they keep going, you know, with this crowd behind them, they just, they just started to stop and mate, they, just, they just kept coming at us and we just couldn't, we couldn't do anything about it in the end. Adam Hollingworth, Prime News. A few hours away from Pretoria, the Lions had a touch of a scare in their first tour game against a Royal 15. But the home side, made up of mostly non-Super 14 players, ran out to an 18-3 lead after just 27 minutes. The tourists regrouped and Irish winger Tommy Bowe was the first man to score a try for the 2009 Lions. From there, Ronan O'Gara scored a try and kicked 17 points, while Welshman Lee Byrne and Alan Wynne-Jones also dotted down in a 37-25 win. Former Wellington playmaker Ricky Flutie came off the bench during the game to be the first man to play against and for the Lions.
And the Warriors have had a dream start for their debutante Kevin Locke in their game against the West Tigers at Mount Smart. Locke was one of two debutantes along with Aaron Heremeyer in the run-on squad. He was put under plenty of pressure early on by Benji Marshall but showed his prowess under the high ball. And then he put a side into the lead. That was the only try of the first half. The Warriors went on to win that game 14-0. It's approaching half time in this afternoon's other game in Newcastle. Last night, there was finally some good news for Cronulla fans. The Sharks picked up much-needed points with victory over Parramatta. Out of origin, game one injured. Paul Gallen looked sombre in the stands as the Eels led at the break. Near side football. Todd Lowry on to Joel Reddy and Parramatta score. It's up and plays it, albeit slowly. It goes... 30 minutes ticked by in the second half before a try was scored and Cronulla pulled even at 10 all. Forced to turn. And he could have secured Mitch Brown, who was... Stand-in skipper Trent Barrett and Luke Cavell put the boot in to seal their first win since round one. Chelsea's given stand-in manager Hus Hiddink the perfect send-off by beating Everton 2-1 in the FA Cup final at Wembley. Everton got away to a great start. Luis Sahar found the back of the net after just 25 seconds, the fastest ever goal in an FA Cup final. Didier Drogba levelled things for Chelsea in the first half before Frank Lampard netted what proved to be the winner, with just under 20 minutes to play. Never shy about shooting, and you can see why! A Wembley spectacular! It's a fitting farewell for Hiddink, who celebrated the best way he knows how, with a, cigar, with a cigar and a few moves in the dressing room. New Zealand will take on old foe Fiji in the quarter-finals of the final round of the IRB Sevens in Scotland. After beating USA 29-5 and France 22-5, Gordon Titchen's side took on South Africa to try to top the pool. New Zealand had a 12-7 lead early in the second half, but South Africa went on to win 14-12 and in qualifying for the semi-finals were confirmed as the IRB Seven Series champions for the first time. They follow New Zealand and Fiji to become the third team to win the series in 10-year history. Danny Lee slid down the field in the third round of the PJ Tours Colonial Invitational. Lee's gone one over today to be three over for the tournament and fall 32 places to 53rd. He's now 14 shots off the pace. It was a pink out at Colonial to show support for Phil Mickelson's wife, Amy, who has breast cancer. The players donned the colours too, and it was South African Tim Clark who took the lead in the tournament. A birdie on the 18th took him to 17 under, two shots ahead of American Steve Marino and Steve Stricker and Aussie Jason Day. Serena Williams has labelled her opponent, Maria Jose Martinez Sanchez, a cheat after her third round win. Williams' volley hit Sanchez's arm and went over the net, which means it should be the second seed's point. However, it went to Sanchez, and Williams went out of her way to show her disapproval. Williams lost the first set 6-4, but took the next two 6-3, 6-4 to advance. Four seed Novak Djokovic's campaign has come to an end. Djokovic was simply no match for 29-seeded German Philip Kohlschreiber, moving in straight sets 6-4, 6-4, 6-4. Oh, yeah. Federer didn't have it all his way against Paul-Henri Mathieu. The Frenchman took out the first set 6-4 and did it in style, but in the second set Federer got rid of his unforced errors and broke immediately. The world number two went on to win it 6-1, then the last two 6-4, 6-3. And coming up next after the break, we'll have weather with Karen. Then, just why has Silvio Berlusconi gone to court to stop the publication of photos snapped at the Italian Prime Minister's New Year's Eve party?